Hi, welcome back to the workshop. On today's video, we're going to be looking at this 09 model of Linda from the Festiniok Railway, formerly of the Penryn Quarry. Um, 09 is a scale that I've worked in before, but uh, I've taken a break from for a number of years, working more recently in, uh, in N and HO scales. Uh, but a recent commission, and not only old, but, um, but some more recent purchases, as me diving back into the scale and, and to my uh, lifelong love for the Festiniog Railway. And uh, it's, it's a very, very special uh, place to me and to many of you, I'm sure. Um, I've been put off, if I'm honest, 09 in recent years by the prol proliferation of, uh, of ready to run. And, it, and it's funny saying that, isn't it? Because it makes the hobby much more accessible to people. And, you know, for that, that's, that's a wonderful gift uh, that both... Um, Backman and Hazen have, uh, have done for us, but uh, and of course Pico. But of course, that does mean that those of us who were knocking around in the scale before, it felt a lot more about scratch building, kit building. Um, there was uh, there was perhaps a little bit more traditional artistry involved, and so you know a, a sudden influx of new interest and new modellers um, just buying things, taking them out of the box and sticking them on a pizza layout, and. Uh, and it was Eastworks was the last proper 09 layout that I've put together. But I've recently been commissioned to put together some 4Ds kits of the, the Festinior coaches. I, you know, I've worked on uh, 09 commissions in the last couple of years and enjoyed them, uh, but not have felt that pull myself. But these uh, these Festinior coaches and chatting to the to my customer Ben uh, drew me right back into the Festinior and those age old conversations of, you know, how do you model the Festiniog? Because at all times of its history, uh, it, it's really had you know, fairly lengthy trains and there's not really many locations that are really quite compact uh, and small. And so to do it justice, you're, either, you know, you, you're going to need a lot of space um, to run that sort of size of, uh, of, of train. And that isn't something that many of us have at home. And if we do, how many of us would really turn over that much space to, uh, to an 09 layout? I mean, I know there are ex exceptions. So... This conversation with uh, with Ben led us down this idea of maybe sort of closely cropping uh, the, the Festiniog into smaller boxes, into bites, and thinking about some of those scenes, uh, and then perhaps presenting them for him. He's he's thinking about presenting them over a, uh, over a period of time, building up a series of these scenes that effectively show different parts of the line, and they can be connected together, so one train could run through them all. But for me, I'm thinking focusing even and close down, just just focus on one scene. A bit like I've done with some of my other cameo layouts. And if you take a look on the blog, uh, there's a bit of a conversation about that and some thoughts on the scheme itself. Um, I'm thinking Boston Lodge Halt uh, in about 60 centimetres. So, uh, so take a look for that. Um, longer trains, though, you know, these days you're looking at eight, eight coaches behind them, down, and that's a long train. Um, so if you take yourself back to um, early preservation, and although I've got the second copy, uh, the second uh, edition of the Narrow Gauge album, the first edition's actually got the original photos in from reopening. But when the Festiniog reopened, trains were shorter, um, you know, two or three coaches. But within a number of years, you know, the popularity of the line had got, got to the extent where basically anything that would carry passengers was pressed into service and hurriedly restored. So, you know, there's that golden age of, of short trains. And so my, my thinking is I'd like to model in that period. And so... Uh, I'm going to do uh, prints uh, and a couple of coaches in the sort of late 50s uh, setting. And then in 1962, uh, the Festiniog were desperately short of motive power and they borrowed Linda uh, from the Penryn. And, um, you know, not instantly a success. There were some teething troubles with, with Gage, amongst other things. Um, but she settled down pretty quickly. And in 1963, she'd gained a tender vacuum brakes uh, and had been slightly regaged so was able to haul trains and from then on she's been a stalwart of the railway and uh, there's something about that early period and uh, and Linda in that form that really appealed to me and it's often the way isn't it so you know a photo will will jump out at you and you just feel like you have to uh, you have to recreate it and of course I haven't put a, a page marker in so I'm now flicking through but uh, but you can see here we've got Linda on top of a couple of coaches, well, more than a couple, but uh, Linda in black with, uh, well, apparently Little Giants tender uh, from, from previous days. So so there you go. That That's what this project was about. It was taking a back and ready to run model and making it my own, doing some proper modelling, 
looking at photos, working out what the Festinio Railway had done. So I've waffled on for ages now, um, and I can't believe I've done this in one take without messing it up, uh, which is pretty impressive. But if you come over here, I'll, I'll get the camera set up a bit closer. We'll get this little turntable spinning and I'll show you this model uh, at its current state. It's not quite finished. There's a little bit of weathering left to do, but I'm really, really happy with how it's come out. So, so come and have a look and uh, we'll talk through some of those changes I've made and some of the things you can perhaps consider when you're working on your own projects. So here she is. Uh, Linda is one of Backman's uh, quarry hunslets, but the larger uh, mainline class. And uh, she was part of the first release, released along with uh, with Blanche uh, in early Penryn livery and Charles as preserved at Penryn Castle. And Linda was supplied uh, with a full cab back sheet, but in this weathered sort of end of life condition. And, um, you know, I, I know Steve, the uh, who was the designer of the model, and his intention had always been to do uh, Linda in a form that was similar to how she uh, she operated at the end of her life, at, but also the beginning of her new life at Festiniog, and so uh, that was why that finish was chosen. And uh, it, it's a great starting point for this model, um, obviously. And um, it, so far, I've not really altered the uh, the Backman finish on the locomotive, although I do intend to do a little bit of softening uh, with a bit of weathering to blend things together. But what changes have been required now? She came as uh, in Penryn condition, uh, which meant dry, she was driven from the uh, the right hand side of the cab. So the reverser uh, was set up on this side with the uh, with the linkage down uh, to the to the valve gear in the centre. Uh, so that needed moving, as did the sanding. So the sanding gear uh, sanding operation was down this side as well. So the Festiniog in 1963 had converted it to left hand drive. So now you can see the sanding rod across the top and the reverser here. Uh, so that was one change and that required cutting off the original parts and I've modified those parts rather than building new ones. So that's worked really well. And it's also presumably similar to what was done in real life. You'll also note that some of the um, the, the pipe work on the side here uh, changed in that period. And of course, fantastically, you know, the, the more modern set, um, versions of Linda have that pipe work faithfully recreated. Uh, I didn't want to buy one of those just to strip the pipe work off and uh, obviously I'm a modeler and I'm happy to, to modify what's there. So I've taken the Backman pieces, used a bit of brass rod here and there, modified them and painted them. And the biggest change has been cutting off the um, the tails, the exhaust tails, I, I guess they are, uh, from that, that pipe work there and replacing that with finer wire. Um, in a much tighter curve and it gives it a more natural look and I think that's probably one of the that pipe work on the prototype model sorry on the model is one of the weakest parts of the whole model and so even just the small changes I've made have made a massive difference to the realism and it's something I think you could do to your own model quite easily I just basically lopped off the top there drilled a small 0 .0, 0 0.4 mil hole very very carefully Sounds really tricky, but it really isn't. You know, using a, a drill and a pin vise, which is controlled by you, by your hands, no motor. So you just very carefully opening that hole up and then feeding in a piece of replacement wire. In fact, I probably started the 0.4 drill. I I would have imagined I opened it up a little bit more to, to make it a bit easier to get that in. Uh, so uh, on the front, we've got a, a vac pipe. Um, to represent, obviously, it's, it's now vac fitted. That means that there's now an exhauster, the pipe here, and the vac pipe there underneath the tank, so they needed adding, and they're just brass rod. Um, and then obviously the cab back's been removed, so I carefully cut it off at the top. Um, well, I pared away a bit lower, cut off a bit lower, and then pared away with the blade to get the uh, to, to get the shape correct at the top. And I've re retained a little piece of the plastic where the um, handrails inserted, so that I could cut that off and drill a little hole, so that I could fit my own handrails. Um, but the bottom is just clipped in place, so that just that just popped off nice and easily. Um, and then the tender, and of course the Cato Pico uh, Prince and Princess model, the England is a wonderful little model, and I absolutely adore the way the thing is put together. It's a wonder of design, of manufacturing. It's just simply superb, so crisp, so clean, so clever. Um, but trying to get my hands on uh, on one. Uh, a damaged or second-hand model was proving almost impossible and luckily uh, a customer of mine was keen to model Palmerston in decaying condition shall we say uh, without a tender 
Um, and so with that in mind, we hatched a plan. I gave him a bit of a discount on the price and I've taken the tender from a uh, Pico Cato princess and he's had the, the locomotive for the work run that I've done and that will appear on the blog in due course. But so this is a Cato Pico tender. The inside's been removed. All the brake gear underneath has been removed um, and I've scratch built a new interior. I've studied lots of photos to try and work out what was carried in the tender at the time and I've, I've neglected to include all the detail. There should be a pipe that connects up here, a flexible pipe, which I presume was for ex, extra water. Um, and then you've got the vacuum brake is actually running on the outside of the tender here as per the prototype. And it appears in photos there always seems to be a bucket. Obviously there's coal. There's a spade, a shovel there for shoveling in, and that's seen in a few photos. And there appears to be a barrel. And I'm not sure what that barrel was for, how it was supported or anything. So I've taken a, an educated guess and left it on a pile, balanced it on a pile of coal with a chock underneath to stop it moving. Uh, I'm just going to weather it and leave it in situ. It looks about right. And you're thinking, how is that going to be balanced on the model? Because he's got two white metal pieces on one side and nothing on the other. So actually underneath this coal... Um, this all sits in a little plastic card tray that I built that goes inside the tender and underneath the coal is a piece of lead that's folded up to almost the same shape as the coal and that's provided nice balance. Um, at the back of the at the back of the Hunslet itself I've removed the coupling from the back and um, inserted a, a short uh, bar with a couple of holes in and then there's obviously I've, I've put a pin on the tender so that it just couples on that way uh, which um, allows us to to run the tender uh, in place of having to have you know an unsightly um, BMO style coupling. The coupling on the front's been modified as well. I removed the sprung bit because I don't intend to be running around any sharp corners and I drilled the uh, the shank of the NEM coupling and then inserted the screw through that so I've still got it at the right height. It looks nice and neat, it matches the one on the back um, but it, it doesn't stick out that awful amount that the, uh, the model does out of the box. And then to finish things off, obviously we've got the etched plates that came with the model, they've been fitted. The back of the model as it comes is quite a dull finish, so what I've done is I've, first of all, once I've got the plates on, I then sprayed the cylinders, uh, the sides of the tanks and sides of the cab in a gloss finish to really bring up and boost up the fin uh, boost up the sheen and the and and the sort of the look, but it, it was far too much and so that's then been dulled down with some satin. And um, what's left to do is I'd like to darken uh, soot up the roof and darken them and, and dull down the top of the tank a little more so I'll mask the dome and then I'll use a matte lacquer across the top of uh, the saddle tank which will hopefully just kill the sheen at the top edges and that matches photos so if you look at photos it, she wasn't repainted she was just polished up probably with an oily rag um, uh, and uh, the fade the lining was really faded um, which is how the model looks the tender has just received a coat of satin black um, I don't intend to weather that heavily, but I will weather the barrel and the and the bucket in the tender. And so there you have it. There she is. Um, you've seen her rotate on this little turntable enough times now to know uh, to what she looks like. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm really pleased. It, it's got me back into 009 in a way I didn't think I'd get back into. You know, 009 previously for me was about either kit building or actually more enjoyably for me, scratch building. So taking a ready to run mechanism and building my own body on top, either whimsy or based on drawings. And I really, really loved that part of the hobby. Um, but in recent years, obviously I've enjoyed doing modified ready to run in different scales, different gauges uh, for myself and for customers. And so this is just the same again. You know, I've taken a ready to run model out of the box, made it my own um, and brought it to life. And it's been a really good fun little project and I've enjoyed it. And what's coming next? is hopefully somewhere for it to run but we will see to compliment uh, linda and uh, obviously prince i'm going to need some stock and whilst i don't have deep pockets um or even the interest of building some 4ds kits for myself i do enjoy building plastic kits and all these models here are based on dundas models toolings and you know they uh they're not really showing their age, really. They uh, they t they clean up really nicely. They don't take long with uh, with a blade to clean off any flash. Go together sharply, cleanly, and they have a lot of character. They have that Festoniog feel, even though um, this one, Van Eleven or uh, you know Carriage Eleven, is uh, is obviously too short. It should have. Uh, it was modified to have the brake compartment at the back and and lengthened, um, but it has a lot of character with its observation windows. Very similar. Um, these two Festiniog style coaches here, 
uh, are obviously much shorter. These are seven, four bays, the prototypes are seven. So um, obviously that's a bit similar to some of the bow siders. There are some with flat sides. Um, and then this has been painted to look a bit like some of the Welsh Highland coaches that we used in the early days. Uh, I've also uh, modified the little, oh, <laughs> I've also modified the little, uh, the brake van. And this represents um, the prototype before it became a uh, mess room or whatever it was at uh, the Acht uh, later. Um, and this isn't a Backman, it is the Dundas model and uh, I've added some little details to this and although obviously I could have bought this ready to run, it was nice to put the kit together. I really enjoyed it. Um, so that still needs a load and all of them need a, a bit of a light weathering but, but nothing too too strong. And I think these lined up uh, will look great running behind both locos. Uh, you know, the, lo the layout Boston Lodge Holt is going to only allow a glimpse really, you're never going to see a full train. It just has to have that feel for me. And so I'm happy to accept the compromise of the shorter coaches. Um, I like the fact that I've been able to build them. I like the fact I've been able to finish them and given them, uh, you know, my my touch. And adding that to the locomotives, uh, which are more out of the box, you know, that blend plus the totally, what will be totally scratch built layout. It's the right balance for me. And it's something I think you need to find your own way with this stuff. You know, there's nothing wrong with mod, uh, running model um, ready to run out of the box there's nothing wrong with modifying it but if you can blend all these things together um, and think about what you enjoy and what you want to do what you want to learn from the project so you know what am I planning to learn from this project I'm I'm enjoying being back in 09 and thinking about that I'm loving considering the Festiniog a prototype I absolutely adore which I've always considered to be too big for a model railway so you know those two things are wonderful for me and I suppose that's what I'm learning here in this project it's no one particular craft skill it's more that connection back to something that's important to me you know I rode uh, behind Linda for the first time in 1988 and uh, you know just well a few years after they'd reopened to Bly now um, and it and it has stuck with me ever since uh, a railway I love to visit and these days I'm lucky enough to visit a couple of times a year um, and recreating that in miniature and uh, and considering how this stock you know Linda as we saw earlier and Prince will bring that to life for me yes in a different period to the one I remember but one that allows me to model the the railway uh, in a form that fits but there's also I've I've noticed another little trait that runs through a lot of the work I do and that's about that air of neglect and whilst early preservation a massive amount of work went into getting the railway up and running but the permanent way was tired and it took several years for that to get uh, to to the to the extent where you know there was clean ballast and replaced sleepers and you know new new er rail you know those early days things were you know on a on a budget and a, a shoestring and at the back breaking labor of, labor of those involved. And whilst that must have been, you know, worrying and stressful uh, for those concerned at the time, you know, I look back at those photos and see the grassy track uh, and, and, you know, hard to distinguish the sleepers and places and things like that. That that really appeals to me. I have no idea why I've talked about it on the blog before. It's probably those memories of walking around Bristol Harbour as a, as a small boy and seeing the railway tracks buried there in the weeds and the grass. But, you know that that um, that picture is is coming through in the uh, in the images I'm seeing of of the Festa New York in this period, and Boston Lodge Holt will give me a chance to play with that and see what that looks like, my palette looks like, my style looks like in an Arrogate setting, in an area that I've not modelled before. I've not worked with a sort of North Wales um, narrow gauge model. I've uh, previously only ever really worked with. Uh, Dorset uh, examples based on the sort of the clay lines at Purbeck um, when I've worked with 09 before so yeah it's an exciting project I've waffled on far too long now I mean if you get to the end of this you probably deserve a medal um, but yeah I do appreciate your time thank you for watching um, there will be more material on all of this on the blog uh, something I love to do which is to write and to articulate myself there um, but I thought, you know, you needed to see Linda uh, in 360. So this video has come about from my desire to share a project I'm really excited about. And I hope that excitement comes across to you. And um, even if it isn't an excitement for narrow gauge, it isn't even an excitement uh, for steam, perhaps. It's an excitement for modelling and for the craft. And for if you can take some of that into your own work, you've enjoyed watching this video, go and pick up, um, you know, the controller and run a train or go and take a look at... Uh, 
a kit you've got on the bench that you need to do some work on. You know, I love watching other people get excited about this stuff because it gives me an energy and an excitement to go and do my own thing. So I hope that comes across and is something that you can uh, put into your own work. Uh, at the very least, hopefully it's it's not been an entirely uh, boring waste of time <laughs> watching and uh, and you'll tune in again soon. If you haven't done, I'd really consider you, uh, really love you to consider subscribing to the channel and uh, and liking this video and, and letting your friends know that you've enjoyed it. Uh, but yeah, until next time, I'll see you all again soon.